men look into the outward appearances but God looks into the inward purity. My dear friends, let us look into today's gospel passage. Today's gospel passage taken from Luke chapter 11 verses 37 to 41 is an incident that happens in a Pharisee's house. Jesus is there for a meal. Now, when he went for a meal, there small controversy arised. And what is that controversy? Now, you might think that Jesus, whenever he goes and has some conversation with the Pharisees, he is always getting into kind of conflicts. That is exactly not true because Jesus and Pharisees used to go to the synagogue on Sabbath days and worship together. Then he would go for meals in Pharisees' houses. And also, it seems that it was the Pharisees who informed Jesus that Herod wanted to kill him. So it was not always a, a kind of controversy and conflict with the Pharisees that was Jesus' agenda. Moreover, Jesus is aimed at something profound. He wanted to correct the religious practices. He himself is a Jew and therefore he wanted to have the self-criticism of his own religion. So we have to take that into account when we reflect about this passage. Now exactly Jesus is correcting the attitude of the Pharisee. Pharisee accused him not washing the feet or hands before the meal. And Jesus immediately says that you focus on outward experiences of purity, but God looks into the heart of the person. As we read in 1 Samuel chapter 16, 7, God told Samuel, men look into the outward appearances, but God looks into the inward purity. For Pharisees, outward purity indicated moral purity. Given the same token, if outwardly if somebody is not clean, that indicated moral impurity. But for Jesus, this is other way around. Once somebody is internally pure, that is what matters than the external. Surely he does not neglect the external purity, but much more than that, the inner purity, inner integrity is so important for Jesus. In other words, we can say Jesus looked at the primary things first and secondary things second. What is the primary thing? Keeping one's life true and pure with regard to their relationship with God and one another. And secondly, the rest of the things come. Now, this teaching of Jesus is followed by another teaching. What is that? He is keeping in mind, if a person is truly pure inside, there will be outward manifestations. It is not just a washing or postures or appearances, but much more than that, such a kind of inner purity will flow into outward actions of alms giving. And he says that alms giving can clean the inside out also. Now, he looks into the Leviticus chapter 27, where it is mentioned about tithes. And later on, in the prophetic and pious religious attitude of Jews, the tithe giving is transformed into alms giving. Like in the case of uh, book of Tobit chapter 4, 7 to 11 and Sirach chapter 29 verse 12 to 14, almsgiving is a much higher uh, motive for loving God and loving one another. So Jesus ultimately tells each one of us that we have to be faithful to our performance, whether it is religious, whether it is social, whatever that we are doing, we should be utterly faithful to our performance. And what is the meaning of that? We should be faithful to our true self, faithful to God, faithful to one another. Through truthfulness, honesty, faithfulness, kindness, generosity, etc. Without these, we will not be able to live a proper religious life. 